Hello and welcome back to another Renderosity tutorial on Poser Pro 2014 and Poser 10. I'm Mark Bremer and in this tutorial we'll be looking at an extension of the last one which was rigging. Specifically we're going to be looking at joint control and working with some of the many tools you have to finesse how your character behaves once the skeleton starts flexing and moving around. Now I must tell you that since this is a more advanced tutorial I'm not covering some of the basics, so if you're watching this having not gone through some of the others, you may wonder, how did he do that? And I cover some of that in earlier movies. I don't go over keyboard shortcuts, you know, that type of stuff here. So, what I want to cover in this reel specifically is how I got a character in here that's not a poser character or a Daz character. Where it came from, we're going to cover bugs in the program when you start working with the joint editors and the setup room how to fix them, and then finally how to finesse and work with the characters and continue to develop them. So where did I get this character? Well, there's a fantastic tool that you can get from a website at makehuman.org. This is an open source software, works on Mac and PC, allows you to design characters, change ethnicity, age, body types, and the nice thing is when it exports, if you've got clothes on the character, it optimizes the character so that the actual body parts underneath the clothes, they go away. So you wind up with some light meshes. You can export in various densities of meshes, all sorts of things from game quality type things to high res stuff you can use for anything you might do inside of Poser. Again, free. Check it out. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. Well, I've got a character in here. In the rigging movie, you saw how I went into the setup room and we imported a skeleton from the library. That's a perfectly legit way to do it. However, now that we're talking about joint controls, there's an option to bring in skeletons that gives you a little more flexibility in how you work with them and helps save you some time. Again, you can always start creating a skeleton from scratch. The issue is that you have to start making your own transform dials for that and we have covered that in another movie so know that that's possible but yeah I like to use pre-existing options if I can so the pre-existing option that I'm talking about is that with this character relatively simple I didn't want skeletons for the hands I happen to know that a character that matches that description is Don the 2011 version here so I clicked and brought him into the room and we wind up with two characters now they're going to overlap and I really don't care. It doesn't matter because it's not about uh, setting up a scene right here. Gosh, they look friendly, don't they? So here's how we go ahead and bring in not only the skeleton, but also the joint setup that somebody else has spent quite a few hours getting right for Don. We might as well use that work with our own character. So I'm going to come back and make sure, and let's just so we can tell these apart right here, let me come over and we will back to the body here and we're going to name this Don instead of figure so we can see these two apart. I'm going to come over here and select Andy which is the name of my character because well I deleted Andy and he automatically inherited the name of the earlier character. With Andy selected we're going to come up to figure and you can come down to copy joint zones from. When I do that it will give you a list of all the characters in your scene. Now, Don's the only character, so he's the only option. When I click on him, we simply don't have anybody else. What it does is it brings in the skeleton and brings in the joint settings. Really important because somebody has already created the little tool sets to finesse those. And when you bring in the joint zones, you get all those little tools. Saves a ton of time. Since I've done that, I'm not going to do it again. So I'm going to click Cancel. And then we'll go ahead and select Don here and say so long. We don't need him in the scene any longer. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going to demonstrate the bug. Let's come into the setup room. You can see I've got the skeleton in there, and I've actually got it all kind of paired up. You can see it's a s simple rig. And I haven't finessed it. His uh, backbone coming off the hip and, well, his headbone is too large. But you know what? Don't care. I've also got it set up symmetrically using the copy joint, or I should say, when you come up here to symmetry, you can come over and say, hey, flip one side to the other, and I flipped the right to the left after I had that set. So here's the bug. In the rigging movie, we learned how to link polygons to certain bone areas. What I'm going to do is call up the group editor right here, 
And let's select like the character's right collar. Now, see how it's really jaggy? This is going to be bad when we start working with it. And you'll do the things you've already learned. We'll go ahead and select to draw. And we are going to add some polygons here and maybe make this uh, look a little nicer and extend that out. After you get that done, you weld the group. We'll accept the defaults. And now we've got a nice harmonious area. You can see over here that the arms themselves are broken up because I haven't optimized them to the joint rigs or the bones like I have over here on the right hand side. Now, very, very important when you're working with this capacity of poser. Save frequently, save often, and periodically save an iteration or a copy of the file that you can then work on and always have something to go back to. Poser kind of, uh, well, it gets flaky as you get to the fringes of the program right here. Let me show you what I mean. If you save your work, it will look just fine in here. I'm not going to save this at the moment. But when you come back into the pose room, I'm getting this warning because I haven't linked polygons to every bone in the scene. Yeah, I know that. Look at this mess that is the character. This is a redraw issue that Poser has, and it may be just the game dev version. But, wow. I mean, you look at that and think, I just wasted all this time. How do I fix it? And nothing you can do in the scene is going to change how this visually looks. You can go into the setup room and undo things. doesn't matter. Well, this isn't actually what's happening in the scene. You can save your work, and everything is actually correct in the scene. It's just showing incorrectly. The only way to make this reappear the way it's supposed to is by simply closing the file after you've saved it, It'll ask me if I want to save it, and I'll say, eh, I don't save. And then you can go ahead and reopen it, and it will present correctly. I probably should have saved it to show you, but yeah, trust me, it works okay there. Why it does that, don't know. Just know that when you see that happen, or if you see it happen, it's not the end of the world. Okay, let's work with the joint editors. Now, I had mentioned that when you bring in, in this case, the Don character and you use the inherit figure options that we came down to with uh, the copy joint zones. Notice it's not highlighted now because we don't have another character in the scene. You get the joint tools that come with it. Well now we're going to see that. Let's go ahead and open up our joint editor. And you can see now the origins are lighting up on the shoulder here. The green is the source origin and then the red is the termination origin. When I choose one of the abilities of the shoulder, the pre-existing morphs that come in with Don when we worked with it, we've got twist front to back, up and down. The things you're used to seeing in the properties palette when you work with it. So if I choose twist, we'll see now, whoa, wait a minute, what's showing up here? These are some of the tools that have automatically imported. In the rigging movie, I actually added a capsule fall-off zone to work with. And we'll look at that, but we're also going to look at working with the tool sets we've got. This twist area, this uh, control right here, is a visual extension that relates to the texture map. Now, the darker the dots, the less influence they have. So if I happen to, let me drag this over here a little bit, so you can see how these start working together. It seems like a very you know, strange process, and it is until you kind of see how these things work together, and then there's like an aha moment. You go, ah. So we've got the right shoulder. If I grab twist right now, we'll see some very funny things happening with the character. Why is this? What's going on? Well, the one thing with Don, while in his uh, preview here, he has his arms down in a very similar fashion. The rig was created for Don when he was in a T-pose. The one thing you cannot do with the Make Human characters is get them set into a T position. Kind of wished you could, but you can't. So knowing that, this is one of the things that we'll fix here real shortly. It's not a, a big deal. Let's look at some of the other options we have. For example, front to back. Well, here's one of those capsule fall-off zones. And we can see we also have some of these other tools. And I'll be explaining these real quick as we come back into them. When I come to the up and down area, we have a different tool right here, and uh, we see a presentation of how this connects to the shoulder right there. Okay, with that set, let's start playing with these tool sets and seeing exactly how they work. If we actually click another area here and go to the forearm, we'll see similar tools and terminations and fall off, all these things. If 
I go bend with the forearm right now, we'll see we get these bizarre O behaviors that happen, and we will cover how to fix that. That's what this is about. Okay, we've got that in place. Let me undo that and bring that back to zero. Let's come back to the shoulder here and start working with that. I'll start from the top the twist option that we have right here. So I will come up here and explain exactly what we're looking at here in the joint editor interface. Let's come to twist. This is the little indicator that shows with twist you can see that my cursor turns into a target. I can manually, and look at the colors change on that uh, vertex map right there. As I drag this in we can see how much influence this has or does not have over that shoulder area. If I drag that in, and then we use the twist tool right here, we get a little nicer behavior going on. Now notice towards the back of the shoulder, it is uh, not behaving particularly well. Well, this tool is a fantastic way to simply, quickly, and easily see exactly what's going on with the maps. You can just click and drag this to change the influence here. This backside is where, just like with the origin tools on the skeleton, it shows where the effect ends and becomes less intense. It's a fall-off control. And then where it becomes more significant. So now that I've adjusted this red area back, when we use the twist tool here a little bit, oh, we're getting a nicer transition going on. So this is one way to start working with this particular tool, the twist tool, and how to control those fall-off zones. Let me bring this back to zero. We do this in the pose room. Because while there is a joint editor inside the setup room, you don't actually move the character. You move the skeleton. And we need to see how the character geometry is working with the bones when we start working with it. So we've got the twist function. Let's go to front and back. When we come down to the front and back dial. And you can also grab the little dial up here. These two are doing the exact same thing. When we do this, we'll see that we've got some strange, strange stuff going on right here. This is a case where we may want to change the tool, and let me tell you why. Let me bring this back to zero, show you what to look for when we're working with this. I'd mentioned Don was set up in a T position, and the reason I know that is because this capsule editor is straight out like the arms were straight out. Our character is not set up like that. We do have the ability, if we wanted, to go ahead and reorient these capsules like I did in the rigging movie. The thing is, is that that is um, a lot of work. There's an easier way. Let's look at that tool. There's two of them here. There's the capsule tool, which is a fall-off tool. The area of greatest influence, which is green. The red, which is where the influence of the function, the dial, falls away and becomes less active. This other little item up here is also a fall-off tool. Red is least affected, green is most. We can see that the cursor is now a little target. And when I drag this, you can see the vertex map underneath starts changing a little bit. If I grab this and pull it back, yeah, it's not showing, not real great and obvious right here. But you can also, the same way with the twist tool, dragging in the in and out point, this becomes a little more obvious here. When I bring the uh, control over here, we've, we've hidden a portion of that. Come over here and bring this back. And we can see that we're getting more vertexes involved. Now that we've played with the various controls we've got, these controls would be great if the character actually had his arm straight out to the side. Well, he doesn't. And I don't want to take the time to reorient all these things to make it work so I can use the exact same tools. We're simply going to convert this function to another tool set inside of Poser. And that's one of the cool features of working with Poser is that you can do that. So what I'll do, we can see the falloff zone is controlled by a capsule right now. What I want to do is actually change that. I'll come down to Add. We can add a sphere zone, which, well, it's a sphere. It's got a green and red area like the capsule. We can see that. Let me come back to a uh, capsule right here. This is a much larger capsule, but we can still see this area of influence and that hasn't changed. What I want to do is say, let's merge the zones to a weight map. When we do that, that tool goes away and this little button for weight map painting suddenly becomes active. When I click on that, 
Let me go ahead and pull this over a little bit. We have the standard painting tools for weight maps as we work with them. Now, what we need to do is actually add influence over the rest of the arm. The reason that it was behaving badly when we started working with it, and we're on the front to back dial right here, is that the rest of the shoulder area has not been connected to this dial. That's what we'll be changing right now. Let me set this back to zero. We've got add selected. We've got this paintbrush selected. And let me go ahead and click right here. And we can start painting and adding. Green is the greatest influence. And then it fades away a little bit. Let me rotate around the character so we can make sure we get everything in here. If you miss a vertex, it becomes painfully obvious because as you do bending, all of a sudden, well, you're leaving body parts behind and it looks somehow painful. Okay, let me rotate just a little bit and paint under this guy's arm. Now you'll notice that uh, as we get near the fringes, the edges here, I let it fall off just a little bit. And if we want to smooth this function a little bit, I'll engage that option. And I can extend this over here to his collar area. When you're working with add and subtract, it stays dedicated to the area you have selected. In this case, the shoulder. When you go with smooth, it reaches out and touches some other areas. So when we come to front to back, now when I move, we're getting things playing a little bit nicer. So you can kind of see how that works right now. Well, let's move on to another body part. I'll close up the painting window right here. We've got our joint editor right here. Let's move to the forearm and check out what's going on there. Now we have a fall off control right here. And we may be able to get away with just using this control. This is why you go through and test each one of the joints. The red means least influence, the green means most influence. So what I want to do is actually kind of pull this around. Well, maybe not, maybe I'll leave it right there. Let's increase the green influence and capture more of the arm. When I come back to, well, let's just start working with the controls here, side by side or bend. Now we're capturing that. Now notice right by the elbow there, we're getting some weirdness going on. Well, what do we do? I'll leave that flexed right now. And we can go ahead and change the influence here a little bit. And tune those up. Let me scroll here a little bit and let's select the hand. All right, we've got another control here going on. Can you see how the thumb is not pure green? If I come into side by side here and move it, we'll see the thumb starts to deform. It stretches. Well, of course, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is grab this green control and move it over and capture more of that hand. And then we've got a little fall off right in the wrist area as it goes into the forearm. Scroll over here a little bit and we'll try this side by side. Yeah, that's behaving a lot better. Some weird stretching, kind of broken wrist looking function right there. Okay, well that's set. And finally with bend, same thing. Now notice how the thumb isn't moving. Let's come over here to bend. We'll see exactly what's going on. Different controller. So as you can tell, each one of these transform dials has its own controller set with it that allows you to go ahead and adjust this. And we'll pull that back and that looks okay. Now, if we don't like this, if this control that we're getting from it isn't really accurate, like right here towards the end of the thumb and that wrist, I'm not convinced I like how that's working. Then what do we do? We can come to the fall off zone and we can say merge zone into weight map. It does that. We can activate the weight map here. We'll say add. Or in this case, we could even, well, I want to add a little bit more. We'll do that with that brush selected little too large. Let me dial that down and maybe reduce the influence to something like 0.5. Okay, I'm going to paint right around the thumb here. Capture some more of that. So now with the bend function here, we can see, yeah, it's behaving a lot better. So there's working with joint controls in the most elemental sense right here, which is pretty cool. 
One thing I haven't talked about, and let's come back to shoulders, is the, well, we've got it down here, the bulge setting. This is how you play with the muscle flexing capability of a joint. You can add it, you can turn it off. If we turn off apply bulges, when I go ahead and do up and down with the arm, we get some, yeah, we need to capture a little bit more of that. If we turn bulges back on, that's not going to change that. I need to capture more of the arm on the weight map right there. So I could come back in and paint that. What we can do for each one of these joints is give them their own little weight map. And as the arm flexes up, in the real world, the shoulder muscle is contracting and gets a little bit larger on the top. That's exactly what these things do. So when we have use weight map turned on and we go and edit the map, we're going to see a smaller map here at the top where that effect takes place. You can paint and add to it and adjust it. This is how on the back of a leg, you'll remember in the rigging tutorial where we had kind of a little bit of a crease going on. This is where you use the bulge controls to paint in those bulging and flexing during a contraction movement. And then negative uh, types of flexors down here, you'd expect it to get a little bit thinner. So you can contract that using some of the other, the left positions and rights. Really fun thing to play with. This is a complex tool set and it requires a lot of nuance and patience when you're working with it. I just bring that up for the simple reason that uh, this is not a fast process and the reason I'm concentrating only on this is because we're just starting to touch the surface of it. You can use bones to control facial expressions by adding your own, doing all sorts of cool things and adding dials. It also gives you a tremendous level of appreciation for the people that create characters because this is not a fast process. It's so in this movie, what we've done is looked at how to fix errors that come in with Make Human Files. It uh, also manifests sometimes with other geometry from other programs, things that you might download from, say, TurboSquid or something like that. How to work and bring in existing skeletons using the function under Figure copy joints from and have another character in there that brings in the skeleton and the joint controls and we've also been working with the joint controls and in some cases changing them from something like capsule to weight map so that we can bet get better control over what's going on really fun tool set you're gonna have a lot of fun playing with it as you work with your own characters in poser